Welcome back to my channel, I'm James. Today we're gonna to be doing another one of my big, huge, new and upcoming releases on 4K Ultra HD and Blu-ray reviews videos. And this is a series that I started a while back where I highlight, review, dive into and talk about a ton of these new and upcoming and exciting releases that are sent to me early for review to dive into all of these. And there's a ton of titles we have to dive into on 4K and Blu-ray of a lot of these really exciting releases. Now in this video series, I'll be letting you know all my testing data and my reviews on these, sharing my review scores and letting you know if these are worth buying or if there's some of these that you should skip. And let me tell you, there's a lot of varied content in this video series. Now, if you haven't done so yet, I do have another one that I just did recently with a ton of new and upcoming releases. And there's about, I think, 35 titles I covered in that video. And this is something that I do quite often here on this YouTube channel. A lot of these companies and studios reach out to me and send me a lot of these for review. And most of these in this video, just like in that previous video, were sent for review. But as always, just because something's sent for review, it never affects my review score, testing data, or my thoughts on the release itself. Though I do want to say a huge shout out and thank you to Kino Lorber, Imprint, Paramount Studios, Via Vision Entertainment, Eureka Entertainment, and Disney Home Entertainment. So I do always appreciate when these studios send these to me early for review so I can do all of these reviews for all of you. Now, as we're going through these reviews, if any of these you're wanting to pick up or buy or add to your collection after you hear my review scores in this video, I always do all of the work for all of you and post all of the direct links to order these directly in the description section and as a pinned comment in the comment section below. When you click down there, it takes you straight out to Amazon. That's never any extra cost to you and they're on sale for the same prices everywhere. Now, a lot of these releases are from some different countries and all over the world. So I posted all of those links. So no matter where you live worldwide, you click on those down below, it'll ship anywhere worldwide for you. So make sure if you decide you want to buy any of these after you hear my review scores to click on those links I've posted down below. First title we're gonna dive into is Disney's Strange World. Now this is a brand new 4K Ultra HD release and I did get in before the release date, but because of how long it takes me to do all these videos, do all my testing, analysis, and to create these, this is probably releasing either on the release date or maybe a day or so after for this title. But this is one of those that I was kind of interested to see what the quality of it is and the story. I did not go to see this in theaters originally. Now I can tell you this is an upscaled 4K and it does have HDR10 on it. And it does have English Dolby Atmos mix on it as well. And it was a good audio mix with some good life on it. And the 4K overall looks decent and the sound is decent. I'm not gonna say it's reference quality Quality though. But that's where things kind of stop in essence for this release for me. I did not really enjoy it. Um, there's numerous reasons for it. I think the pacing of it is really off. I think the writing of it has some really wonky writing and clunky scenes and there's really clunky and kind of just bad dialogue in it and some of the characters I didn't like and overall there's a lot of story elements that I thought were controversial or just kind of, I don't know, overall irritating to me. I really just didn't find this film that enjoyable or that good. I kind of feel like this was one of those films that they tried to throw everything at us to make it stick to the wall, that they hoped that they could get every different person, every different genre, every different element, every different political faction, everything you could possibly think of, throw it into the movie and hope enough people enjoyed it. And to me, it made the film just overall just wonky, clunky, and I just didn't enjoy it and it's a shame and because there was a lot of story beats in this that I really didn't like that it just wasn't an enjoyable film for me and I really felt like it's one of those films that they were trying to do some things that there was just too much going on that didn't need to be and too many things were thrown into the story to try to appeal to certain groups that I didn't like that either. And there was, like I said, some of the dialogue I really didn't like. Now, if you're a massive Disney fan and you literally have to have everything released by Disney, then you might enjoy it just because if you overlook some of the things from Disney that you might say, oh, I loved the film because hey, it was Disney. I will say I thought the colors were cool in it and I did think the animation was nice. I actually thought the animation style in it was really cool. And I thought there were some elements of like the artwork and the style they were going for for the film that I did enjoy. So it's not that I overall just said I absolutely hated it. 
It's not that, it's just that there were so many other elements in it that were so poorly done. And like I said, some of the controversial things that I really didn't like, that I just couldn't enjoy the film and it wasn't one of those films that I can recommend. So overall, even though it had an okay transfer, that's an upscaled 4K, and the Atmos mix was decent, it's not reference quality, it wasn't the most amazing moving things around the room, but it was decent. But I still just don't recommend this release. It's not recommended. It's not something that I would recommend buying or adding to your collection. Like I said, unless you're the biggest Disney fan ever and you have to have every Disney movie released on 4K, then I guess go ahead and buy it. But to me and just my recommendation for it, it's not recommended. It's not something that I feel like you're gonna watch over and over again. And it's not something that I feel like you're gonna dive into over and over again. So it's just kind of one of those things that it's just not a recommended release. I wouldn't say to buy it on 4K. I wouldn't say to really buy it at all. Now, if you haven't done so yet, make sure to go down and give this video a like and a thumbs up for me. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. That way, just like with this video, you never miss out on any of my exclusive or early reviews that I only release here on my YouTube channel. So make sure to go down, give this video a like and a thumbs up, Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. Next up, we've got the Chuck Norris Missing in Action Trilogy on Blu-ray. Now this has been released numerous times before on Blu-ray and I actually own several of the previous releases before on Blu-ray. Um, some of them were in box sets like this, which have one and two, and then you had the third one separate. But this is the full trilogy with brand new HD masters, which were created from new 4K scans of the original 35 millimeter camera negatives, with part three in this series being a new 2K scan of the 35 millimeter interpositive. So as far as how they look in comparison to the previous Blu-ray releases, there is a drastic increase in details on this set versus what you have on the previous ones. You get much better colors, you get much better details on it. Overall, the actual image on this does look better, though I will say there is a negative side to it. On your previous Blu-ray releases that you had before, they always retained some slight black crush in the darker scenes. That is still on these, which makes me to believe on the original actual camera negatives, those do have black crush on them because it seems like every single release that's released of these films has that black crush. No matter what studio is releasing it, whether it's new scans or not, in those dark scenes at night and things like that, that black crush is still retained. But overall, these are a big improvement and do look drastically better than what you had on the previous Blu-ray releases. On this, you also get English DTS HD Master Audio 2.0, and it does sound much clearer, crisper, and easier to understand dialogue, sound effects, gunfire. Everything did sound better than the previous Blu-ray releases as far as that goes as well. So overall, the trilogy that Kino Lorber did here, which huge shout out to Kino Lorber for this, they did a much better job with this, and this is the best way to view the Missing in Action trilogy. And I was pleasantly surprised because I wasn't sure that we were gonna get too much of an upgrade with it. But if you're a Chuck Norris fan, this is a great trilogy of movies. No, I'm not gonna say it's perfect. There are some cheesy dialogue, some of the writing's not so great, messed through between all three films, but I enjoyed them as Chuck Norris action movies. And if you go into them knowing they're Chuck Norris, and you expect that level of acting and dialogue and slightly cheesy fight scenes and things like that sometimes, you'll enjoy them. Because if you enjoy Chuck Norris, these are some of Chuck Norris's best films. And I really always enjoyed this series and love that it was a trilogy of films. And this is the best way to view them. This one is definitely recommended to buy and add to your collection. The trilogy is the way to go. So getting to my review score for the Missing in Action trilogy by Kino Lorber on Blu-ray. This gets a very good 8.7. So image, sound, 8.7, a recommended release to buy and add to your collection, especially if you like Chuck Norris. If you don't own these films already, definitely buy it in this set. If you own the previous Blu-rays, you'll definitely still want to get this one if you enjoy these movies. An 8.7 is a very good review score. Next up, we have Imprint's release of War of the Worlds. This is Imprint and Paramount Studios' number one 4K Ultra HD release from Imprint, which is an Australian label, that they released on 4K Ultra HD. Now, I've gotten a lot of questions here on my YouTube channel asking me about this release, how it compares to the US version I got from Paramount Studios. 
Well, I'm gonna answer all those questions today. I also wanna say a big thank you to Imprint and Via Vision for sending this to me for review. They did reach out to me and ask me if I wanted to dive into this and I said, yeah, this would be great because I can answer everyone's questions on this now. Now I will say Imprint, this is their first 4K Ultra HD release. And I will say for their first diving into this 4K Ultra HD space, they did a pretty darn good job. Here's why. This is a native 4K 2160p. It does have Dolby Vision and HDR10, which is similar to what you got with the Paramount Studios release as far as the technology side of it, not the actual image presentation. The image presentation of what you get on this does look better than the US version that I got previously. When I went through all my testing and analyzing and setting these side by side to go through the differences between them, this one does have much more grain present on it that you can see, which tells me that it seems like they took what Paramount Studios did, but didn't use maybe as much of the DNR slight pass they did in some scenes on the Paramount release. This one has more grain present in those scenes than what I noticed on the Paramount release when I was going side by side. So that was a nice bonus on that side of it. So even though they used the scan that Paramount did because Paramount provided that, it seems like in those some of those scenes, and again, the Paramount release wasn't horrible. It just had some very slight scenes with DNR. But this one seems to have not as many of those, though I will say there was still some that were slightly softer. But again, we're comparing between the two of them. So in that sense, this one has a one-up over the American release that was released on 4K as well. Now I will touch on the negative. This does still retain the blue Mars in it. That's not gonna change straight from Paramount Studios that would have taken, I guess, a bunch of extra time and work for them to change that. So no matter what country releases the 4K Ultra HD release of War of the Worlds, my understanding is, is directly from Paramount, it will always retain that blue Mars release because it's being licensed all from Paramount Scan. So that's just the way it is. But that's one of the slight nitpicky things. Um, otherwise, if you didn't know anything different, you'd pass that scene over with the blue Mars, go on with the rest of the movie and say, man, it looks great. And the US release had the Blue Mars, so neither one of those is a one-up for the Blue Mars for that few seconds of that scene. Now, talking about some of my testing between them. On the US Paramount release from Paramount's Presents of War of the Worlds, not this one from Imprint, but the Paramount Presents War of the Worlds one, that one had a rough average bitrate of 63 megabits per second. And it had some slight dips throughout it, but the 63 megabits per second was pretty decent. After I did all my exclusive testing and diving into this, this imprint in Paramount 4K Ultra HD of War of Worlds has a rough average bitrate with a very high and very strong 79 megabits per second. That was quite a bit of an increase over what the Paramount Presents 4K Ultra HD release in the US had, which also lends to why the image is more stable throughout it. And it does have a better looking image with slightly more detail, simply because the film grain throughout it does look better on this 4K Ultra HD release, which lends to a better looking image in my opinion, which again, looking at the bit rates, you sitting them side by side, you're getting quite a drastic increase in the bit rate on this as well. So I was pleasantly surprised and I was happy because to be honest with you, this imprint release is pretty darn impressive. I mean, this 3D cover on the front here, if you can see it where it's War of the Worlds, I think is one of the coolest 3D covers. And it comes in this hard box case. It says 4K Ultra HD in Blu-ray, imprint number one, 1953. This is their first 4K Ultra HD release, so it has number one on it. It is a very limited edition set. So I will post the links for all of these directly in the description section right below this video. But this is a limited edition set. Once it sells out, my understanding is it's gone because that's how Imprint Via Visions line does these limited edition sets. But I'm very impressed with it. It goes into, it has a big booklet in here, talks about all the special features. It does have a Blu-ray disc in here, which includes the new 4K on the Blu-ray version in this as well. You do also get DTS HD 5.1 surround and LPCM 2.0 stereo, the original mono mix. And those are all in English, which is a nice option on this as well, which was a one-up over the US release as well. Then when you get inside this thing, you get this really impressive booklet. Now this booklet is nice and glossy. I really liked this thing. Goes into it here, talking about the behind the scenes, talking about the film, little excerpts, pictures, all the posters from around the world of it. 
really nice high glossy booklet and I was impressed with their booklet and I really like getting things like this. They always remind me of like the Arrow video releases. And that's how this one comes in this box. It is one of these thick like cardboard boxes, just like what Arrow video does. Another impressive thing is, is you get it in a steel book case in this limited edition set. So not only does it come in that nice boxing housed inside it, you get this steelbook case, which I really like the artwork. It says War of the Worlds on the side, number one. On the back, it has another picture on it, which I did like that as well. And then when you get inside here, you do get steelbook artwork on the inside. This is your 4K Ultra HD disc, which is 100% region free. And then you also have your Blu-ray disc, which is also region free. So as far as this release goes, it's a very impressive first 4K Ultra HD release from Imprint. And I will say as far as this one goes for War of the Worlds, this is the ultimate way to watch War of the Worlds on 4K Ultra HD. The impressive levels of details that there are little things you'll notice if you sat down and went side by side between this and the US version that was released by Paramount Presents. There are little things throughout the image on this that are nice increases in details. And I said, I did think the film grain looked better throughout this and there wasn't as much DNR and those slight scenes present as what there was on the actual one that was released in the US. So for this one, this one gets for my review score, an excellent, 9.1. This is one of those that really is a must buy that you need to buy and add to your collection while it's available because it is a very limited edition release. My understanding is I think there's 2,000 of these that they're making and then once they sell out they're gone. But as far as War of the Worlds goes, this is the edition I'm going to watch on 4K Ultra HD anytime I want to watch it because compared to the Paramount Presents, this one does beat it and is a nice improvement. Now I'm not gonna say it's gonna knock your socks off and be the most drastic improvement you've ever seen between two 4Ks, but it's nice enough for me because of the collectability of this box, the booklet, the posters inside the booklet, the steel book, the 3D cover, all of those are nice impressive things that for a collector like myself, this is a must buy and a must have even for those slight increases in better image and sound quality that's on this release versus what we got in the US, this is a must buy that you're gonna to wanna to buy and add to your collection. Next up, we have the 1986 action, mystery, drama, thriller, and this is No Mercy. And it's got Richard Gere and Kim Basinger in it. And it's kind of one of those films that I would kind of more link in the area of guilty pleasure. It's not a perfect film, it has some odd pacing throughout it, but it's a good 80s film that I've enjoyed because I used to watch it on TV. And you know, if you watch a lot of those Saturday afternoon or Saturday night movies, which is what this was back when I watched it, I always enjoyed it and thought it was fun. It's not perfect, but it doesn't have to be. I mean, heck, if you get entertainment from something and you enjoy the movie and have a fun time, isn't that what we watch movies for in the first place? And it's a good Blu-ray release. Now, this is released by Kino Lorber. It does come with this really nice slipcover. I do like that, so it has a slipcover with it. But keep in mind, these slipcovers from Kino Lorber are limited editions. They're only in the first pressing, so once they sell out, you don't get them with the slipcovers ever again. But it does talk about it comes with Fire with Fire, interview with the actor, theatrical trailer, and it's a fast-paced movie. It runs about 106 minutes. It is rated R, keep that in mind. It does have strong language, violence, and brief sexual content, but none of it's too extreme or over the top. I mean, it is a child of the 80s movie, so I think it's done tastefully, and it's a fun film. And your Blu-ray is 100% region free. I did test it as I always exclusively do. So you won't have any issues with playback no matter where you live worldwide if you're wanting to buy this or import this through that link I posted below. The disc itself is region free. Next up, we've got the 1987 Program to Kill. Now I always felt like this film, because it's an 80s film as well, but it was kind of more of like a female Terminator. Basically she gets taken and she's basically a woman terrorist that then they capture, the CIA captures, and they program her to be like this basically robot that's a killer for them. She then gets like haywired and basically things happen and then she ends up coming back after the CAA, kind of like killing people from them and it's kind of like a back and forth. But overall, it is one of those films that I do think has some good action in it. No, it's not as huge a budget as like Terminator was, but it's still a fun film and it really has some good like sci-fi, action, thriller moments in it. 
It's got a good performances by the actors in it, and I enjoyed the film. It is one of those that in the 80s I enjoyed, and I'm glad it's on Blu-ray. It looks really good on this Blu-ray release from Kino Lorber. Now, show you what you get in this. It gets a really nice slipcover, first pressings only. So remember, these slipcovers are limited editions. Once they sell out of them, you get them without slipcovers. But for right now, they are coming with a slipcover because this is coming out here soon. It says, Program to Kill on the side. Then on the back it talks about it. You get an audio commentary, interview with screenwriter, alternate opening credits, theatrical trailer. It is rated R for strong violence and language, and it does run 91 minutes. So it's extremely fast paced, but it's a fun film. Now showing you what you get in this, it does come with reversible artwork, which I really liked it because it says the reversible title of Retaliator. So there was two titles for the movie and I like the reversible artwork it had on it. It says they made her the perfect killing machine and then they lost control. Then when you get inside here, you do have your Blu-ray disc here. Now, bad news is I did test the Blu-ray disc. It is region A locked. So those of you that want to import this anywhere worldwide, you will need a region A or region-free multi-region Blu-ray player to play this disc. Those of you that live in the US, Canada, Mexico, Region A territory, this is Region A lock, so you'll have no problems playing this whatsoever. So Program to Kill Retaliator, if you're looking for a sci-fi action adventure film with a woman in the lead role that kicks butt, really kicks butt, this is a good one from the 80s to check out. And I definitely recommend this Blu-ray release. It was a fun time, and it's a great release by Kino Lorber. Now, if you haven't done so yet, make sure to give this video a like and a thumbs up for me, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. Next up, we have Jackie Chan's Epic Police Story Trilogy on 4K Ultra HD. Now, this is one I announced quite a while back, and it was actually sent to me way early for review from Eureka. But for some reason, it didn't arrive here until just now. And it just took the mail, I guess, forever, or it was sitting on someone's desk on the mail. I don't know, man. The mail really stinks sometimes, especially being a reviewer wanting to get things out early sometimes. They sent it to me way before release date, but it didn't arrive until just now. But I'm gonna dive into this and tell you my thoughts on this. I will tell you there is some issues with the packaging. Now, does it ruin the movies? No, but I'm gonna point it out right away because I'm sure I'm gonna get questions about it. The J card that's on it is misprinted and it's slightly too large on the sides and then too small on the bottom and then cuts off kind of awkwardly on the top here. But that's not the worst thing. I mean, that doesn't change the quality of the box set. But I'm gonna to touch on it because I know I'm gonna get questions about it. Otherwise, I do like the artwork they used on the actual box itself. I love these Jackie Chan movies. I've had the Criterion Collection releases. I've had numerous releases of this. I've had the previous Eureka releases on Blu-ray. Now, I will tell you in comparison to the Criterion Collection and the previous releases from Eureka, this is the best viewing experience of the Police Trilogy that I've seen. By far, they did a really good job with the grading on these. With these being a native 4K 2160p, the presentation you get on these is really impressive for the age of the film. Now these did come out between 1985 and 1992, and that's the trilogy. So you have Police Story, Police Story 2, and Police Story 3 Super Cop. Now this is the first box set ever released worldwide with all three films on 4K Ultra HD. Now there was a release by 88 films in the US of only Super Cop 3 in the US. My understanding is, is they use the exact same transfer that is on this disc that's in this set. So to me, I wouldn't want it separate because that's the only one they released. I'd want them all together in this box set. And let me tell you, this box set is extremely nice. I thought that it was great with the size of the booklet you get in here that I'll show you here in a minute. The image presentation is very nice. The sound quality was great. You get all your different audio options. You get your original Cantonese. Then you also get your English dubbed audio options. And then on the final film, you even get the Cantonese in Dolby Atmos. So they really gave you a ton of options on this, depending on what you want to listen to, with English subtitles as options throughout all of them as well. So if you want to listen to it in the original Cantonese with English subtitles, go ahead and equip that. All of those options are on this, whether you want the dubbed versions or not. Now this does come with Dolby Vision and HDR10 on it. Between the Dolby Vision and the HDR10, there's not too much of a variance. Both of them looked really good and are really nice image presentations with lights to darks. There was only some slight blocking in some darker scenes that I did notice, 
but it's brief and it's very slight. And to be honest with you, compared to the old Blu-rays, it's still a leaps and bounds ahead of those and brings an impressive level of detail and depth to the image while also retaining the natural film grain. It is present nicely throughout all of the films. They did not DNR it out or take it away. It is healthy, it is stable. You can see the film grain throughout it. There's only some slight fluctuations briefly in each of the films. It's not too much to write about. So overall, the box set and the image presentations of what they did in this is very nice. Now in this box set, you get all three movies, but you also get all five cuts of the film. So you can choose between the cuts, whichever ones you like, some are shorter, some are longer, and you can watch those and they're all included on the 4K Ultra HD discs in here. Now showing you what you get in this, you do get it where it says the police story on the side, all obviously in English because this is an English release from Eureka. Then on the back, it goes into talking about the special feature. Then you get inside here to this very impressive, very thick book that Eureka Entertainment did talking about the film, going into behind the scenes about each and every film, stories about it. Nice glossy pages, by the way. I really liked what they did with this one. And guess what? It's printed with the same ink from the same manufacturer, I would bet, that Arrow Video does these from because it smells identical. And I love that smell. Some people hate that smell, but if you watch my channel a while, you'll know, mmm, I love that smell. But anyhow, Pictures are really glossy, really nice, really glossy pictures. Talks about all of the films. I thought the book was extremely impressive. Plenty of content to read. And this limited edition book is worth the box set alone. I thought I really enjoyed this book and it was missing in a lot of the other releases I had on Blu-ray. So it's really nice that this was included in this limited edition set. Then you get to the cases. This is Police Story, the first one. It says Police Story on the side. Talks about the film on here. And then when you get inside here, you get your disc in here. All of your 4K Ultra HD discs and each and every one of these that's in this box set is 100% region free. So no matter where you live worldwide, you won't have any issues playing this at all. And I will post the direct link for this directly in the description section right below. I have the direct Amazon link that I'll put down there. Next up, you have Police Story. Now I will touch on these have reversible artwork, though on the other side, it's just a picture of like Jackie Chan in action from each of the movies. So it's not really a front cover. And I will touch on when you get this, the actual cover artwork they used on the front covers of each of the movies is kind of a, I don't know, more faded cover artwork. Now my understanding is, is they did that to kind of present more of like an 80s faded look to the cover artwork. So that was intentional. So when you look at it, don't think that it looks like it was printed on a regular printer. That was more intentional the way they wanted it to look. Kind of a more stylized 80s look, but it's just something that I did notice when I was looking at it. It's not, I don't know. You'll see what I mean if you buy these, the cover artwork itself. It's just slightly different than what most releases come out with. It says police story on the side here, and then it has obviously the rest of all your special features. And I'm not gonna dive into those. It would take me hours to go through the massive amount of special features contained in this set. And then when you get inside here, this is your police story two disc. Getting to police story three super cop. This is my favorite cover artwork. I really liked this one. And on the side, police story three super cop talks about it on the back here. And then when you get inside here, I really liked the disc artwork for the police story three my favorite of the disc artworks as well. Overall, in my opinion, after my testing and reviewing and going through these films, this is the best way possible to experience this trilogy of films with Jackie Chan. And they're really fun comedy action adventure films with Jackie Chan that are lighthearted without getting too intense at all, which is why I always felt like Jackie Chan was one of my favorite action stars. He just has a great just sense of comedy with his style of martial arts. And he did a lot of his own stunts throughout all these films, which are incredible when you see this film, because overall each film has some really impressive stunts and he got injured on him doing them. And knowing that, I mean, there's some cool stunts in this that if you haven't checked out these films, you're really missing out on some great classic martial arts films from the 80s. The films themselves come highly recommended. This box set, as far as my review score goes for this entire set from Eureka, this is a very limited edition set, so keep that in mind. For this one, for my review score, this gets an outstanding 9.4. This is a must buy. Do not wait, do not delay. Buy this while it's available. You'll thank me after you get this set because that book alone is such a fun read to dive into little things about the trilogy of films about Jackie Chan, the making of all different things. Loved that book. I love having it in the box set, even with the slightly misprinted J card, which my understanding is 
they're going to be fixing or have fixed. It's just mine was sent before the release date. So mine has the old J card on it, whereas now they probably fixed it by now. But mine took so many months to arrive, no reason why. I always hate when that happens. But this is a 9.4. This is the best way to experience these films on 4K Ultra HD. This is a must buy for any martial arts, comedy, action adventure film fan. These 4Ks must be owned, and in this box set, this is the way to buy them. Make sure if you're gonna buy this, I put that link directly down below in the description section right below. This is one of those you're gonna love having in your collection on 4K Ultra HD. Next up, we have one of my favorite classic 1960s television series, The Avengers. If you haven't seen the series, it is a fun like comedy, sci-fi, mystery, spy, action adventure, murder mystery. I mean, it really kind of goes all over the place, but it is such a fun series with so much great charm. From the characters, Emma Peel and John Steed are really great in it. They play off each other so well. I personally think they were the best two in the Avengers series. Now, John Steed, which is Patrick, he goes on obviously later on to other series with other actresses, but Diana Rigg was great in this. I loved Diana Rigg with him and I really appreciated both of them together. And this is one of those releases that is really exciting because in the US, we only ever got this season five or series five on Blu-ray. They never released any more of it. So series four that's included in this box set was never released in the US. We got this and that was it. So this is one of those that has something that we can get in the US because the entire series is 100% region free, but it includes what we never got any more of the Avengers other than this Blu-ray set. So in this, it does include series four and five, and it is 16 Blu-ray discs. And it's a pretty darn impressive set. I loved this hard case. Now it is from Imprint Television, and they did send this for review, so huge shout out and thank you for sending it. But it does come in this huge box. I really liked this, how it has the cutaway in the box. See how it comes off with the cutaway? I think that's kind of cool. As a collector, I like little notches and things like that. Then on the back here, it does have a card that's removable, and underneath it obviously has Emma Peel again. But on this card, it talks about it. It has a 120 page booklet in it, hours of special features, but the special features on this are really great. There are so many to dive into. And then it obviously talks about both that they're 1080p high definition from the original 35 millimeter elements. Now, the question a lot of people are asking is, how does it compare image quality to this? Well, basically they're using the same studio canal transfer that was used for this set and for the one that was released in the UK that is on this. There is just some slight tweaks they did for this set when they released it that in my opinion made this just slightly better image quality. It's not going to be so huge that you're gonna say, man, that's like 80% better. I'm saying maybe five to 8% better in some areas because it's got more stable of the film grain in it and it just has a better looking and pleasing image than some of what this did because this one just had a slightly more compressed image which this one does not. So they gave it plenty of Blu-ray discs in this set to make sure that nothing was over compressed. Whereas this one had slightly more compression. It had some slight blocking in it. And that's due to them over compressing it to fit it on fewer Blu-ray discs. Whereas this, it put it on plenty of Blu-ray discs to give it more room to breathe, which is what increased that, like I said, about 8% better visual quality. Though I will say for this release though, it still retains those odd digital issues where like, you're talking about John Steed's umbrella in some of those scenes, like in the black and white season, when he's holding his umbrella, it kind of disappears the pole for a little bit. That has to do with the digital, basically, that they did of the scan and things like that. And when they mess with it digitally, it still has some of those odd digital things that are still present. But the image with the film grain and the actual way the image looks without blocking or banding or anything like that that were present on the other Blu-rays, they're gone on this. So this is the best image presentation that I've ever seen of the Avengers series four and five. And I've owned them, so that's how I know about them because I have this one and then I have over there the UK one. So this one is the best of all of them. But again, you're looking at about a, like I said, five to 8% better image quality on this release. But the thing that blows away all the other releases is we never got series four in the US 
and wait till you see what's in this box set. When you take the top off here, you have all of your Blu-ray cases listed out here with a big book in it. Now I'm gonna show you this here. The booklet is sideways. It says the Avengers, the Emma Peel collection. Inside it's extremely high glossy going into the Emma Peel years. It's got pictures after pictures after pictures talking about it, talking about the films behind the scenes things that they did with the episodes. I mean, it is a really impressive and nice book and it's thick and it's glossy. Now, the only thing about it is in the book, because it sets in there sideways, your book will come slightly bent because of how it sets in that box set. It's just the way it is because it's leaning against the Blu-rays in there. It's not ruining it or damaging it, but I did really enjoy the book and I liked that, which none of the other sets had this big book in it either. So that was a big bonus for this set because I like these additions that make these limited edition sets really fun to own and collect. Then when you get inside, you get your individual cases for each season, all the Blu-rays inside here, which as I did say, those are all region free. I tested all of them so you won't have any issues playing these at all. And then on the backs, you got different artworks on each of the backs of the cases. And then you have your color seasons and then the backs of those. And then to show you what you get inside this, it does have really nice artwork on each and every one of the discs, talking about it, saying it's from Via Vision, Imprint, and Studio Canal. And then it goes through, each one has their own cover artwork on them with behind the discs themselves on the back of the reversible artwork. And it lists off what episodes are on them, what discs they're on, all printed on the back of that as well. So if you're a fan of classic television, if you like the Avengers at all, this is one of those box sets you need to have in your collection. Now getting to my review score for this, this gets a very impressive 8.9. This is a must buy. If you like classic TV, especially from the 60s, this is one of those series that I absolutely love. Now you might ask yourself, why didn't they release all of the series? That's a complicated question because the problem is all of the other series have elements missing from them. They weren't stored well and they actually were filmed on odd elements that caused issues with upgrading them to basically HD or 4K or anything like that. And they've had issues with them. My understanding is, is some of the episodes are actually lost so they can't even put them on HD. So it seems like this is about one of the best things we're gonna get. Now this is called the Emma Peel Collection because it's specifically about Emma Peel, the character with Diana Rigg, and that's why it's called that collection. Do I think we'll ever see some of the other series? I don't know. My understanding is, is because they're unable to get all of that together, Studio Canal tried numerous times. I don't know that we're gonna see anything else. This is a great collection. I mean, 8.9, it's a good review score. It's an impressive release loved the collection and as a tv series fan i was really excited to finally own at least in the u.s here series four even though in the uk they had series four before but we never got it in the u.s now we can now we own it in a region free box set next up we have the return of swamp thing the 1989 dc comics superhero slash zero hero um it's one of those films very low budget let me start that off by saying that um, the budget was not huge. It was not filmed real well. It was not stored real well. It's got a lot of damage. I was surprised we got a 4K release of this because the Blu-ray releases were very just poor to begin with that, yeah, it was good to have it on Blu-ray, but there's just so many things wrong with the film elements that unless you're going to spend millions of dollars to do a restoration, I mean, to be honest with you, it's, it's, it just looks poor. I mean... We got it on 4K. I bought it on 4K to test it and review it for all of you. This is one of those, it wasn't sent for review. And to be honest with you, it's just not an amazing release. It's not something that's gonna blow you away at all. Um, I'm glad I have it on 4K as a collector side of it, but not as a film fan side. And I'll explain what I mean here. The film came out in 1989, and this is a native 4K 2160p release. And it does have Dolby Vision and HDR10 on it. And it is advertised as a new 4K restoration and new 4K scan of the original Interpositive. But I'll be honest with you, when you're watching this, you're not gonna think it was a restoration. Now, yeah, maybe they fixed some things from the previous Blu-ray or the one before that or the scan before that or fixed some things from this scan, but it's just poor. I mean, I'm just being honest with all of you. It, it does look poor. It's extremely soft in a lot of scenes. The film grain is all over the place. You'll have clumping on the film grain, blocking. You'll have issues with digital noise. You'll notice it'll go from one scene where you'll see the film grain, it looks pretty decent, to literally that same scene a split second later, 
going back to that same person, all of a sudden it's hazy, blurry, hard to see. There's no film grain, it's soft. It looks like there was some DNR applied. Then you go right back to a scene that has some film grain. Then you go to a scene that has a bunch of blocking and clumping. Then you go to scenes that have a lot of blots and specks and smudges and little tears and little pieces of hair it looks like from the scan. And I mean, it's just, it's all over the place. It's a very, very inconsistent, very uneven viewing experience. You never really feel comfortable when you're viewing it. I understand again that it's a low budget film. Now, when you advertise something as a new restoration, I really expected a lot more to be done with it. I mean, when you compare it to the previous Blu-ray release, yeah, there's some slight things that look better, but then there's some things that I actually felt looked worse. I mean, some of those soft scenes actually even looked worse on this. So I'm not quite sure if they tried to apply DNR to it in a lot of those scenes, which then obviously took away what film grain was there and made it look even worse and made it look even softer, which is a downside of this. Now, I did recently hear on my YouTube channel a review of Highlander. If you haven't checked out that review, you'll wanna go check out that review. Um, as far as that review goes, there are some similarities in the low budget. Basically, the way it was filmed, it's just it's just not great. And to be honest though, this got a new restoration, which doesn't look so great. I mean, there's so many issues with this and so many things I encountered when going through it that I can't say it's an amazing looking release because that would be just straight up lying. And I really feel like if you're gonna advertise something as a new 4K restoration, you really need to take the time and work to put into it so that people aren't disappointed with your company and studio because they really feel like you kind of lied to them and didn't really do a new restoration. Yeah, you did a scan, but then in some areas, comparison to this to the previous Blu-ray release, in some areas, this 4K actually looks worse than the previous Blu-ray release. Then in other areas, the 4K does look better. But again, it's hard to say that it's an amazing release because those few scenes that look good, then there's so many scenes that look worse. And it's just really, really inconsistent and a poor viewing experience overall. And a lot more work and a lot more time should have been put into this restoration. A lot of those smudges, blotches, things like that, they could have taken those out if they would have taken more time to work on this restoration. And that's where I feel like if you're gonna advertise as a restoration again, you gotta do all of the work to make it seem like a restoration, not just, well, maybe we took out two blots and smudges, which I know I'm probably exaggerating there, they probably took out more than that, but there's so many more. They should have taken some more time before they released this on 4K, in my opinion, to actually call it a restoration. Now showing you what you get in this, you do get a slip cover in the first pressings here. I did like the artwork on this. It says Swamp Thing, the return of Swamp Thing on the side. Talks about the film here, obviously talking about that it's a restoration. Then when you get inside here, you do get two discs in here, your Blu-ray and your 4K. Both discs I did test. They are 100% region free, so no matter where you live worldwide, if you're wanting to get this, I put that link down there below. It'll ship anywhere worldwide because both discs are 100% region free. You won't have any issues playing this whatsoever. Now getting to my review score for the return of Swamp Thing on 4K Ultra HD. This gets a poor 7.3. All of those issues and things could have been worked on more, could have been restored more, could have had a lot more of those blotches and splotches and inconsistencies and don't use the DNR that you use to take away some of the film grain in those scenes that you thought was gonna help them, it made it worse. I mean, it's just, overall, it's an inconsistent release. Again, I took into consideration the budget as I always do, just like when I talked about with Highlander, I understand the elements and all of that. And I understand that with this, but this still had a restoration and there were still things that could have easily been done with a little bit more time and a little bit more money and a little bit more work put into this that could have easily been fixed. A lot of those blotches, splotches, hairs, tears, all of that types of stuff, inconsistency on the film grains, using the DNR. I mean, that's all stuff that could have been fixed on it. So for that reasons, that's why it gets dinged. This release simply can I get a higher review score because of the quality of it? And as always, I will be upfront and honest with all of you. Now, as a collector myself, this is where I'll talk about the collector side. I am glad I own this and that I have this in my collection, but it's simply because I like collecting 4Ks, not because I think this is an amazing release. I don't. Compared to the Blu-ray, again, some scenes look better, some scenes look worse. So it's kind of a mix mash of a bag on this film. I like having the 4K because I own it, but it's not a great one. And it's not one that I'm gonna recommend and say you gotta buy it and must own it. It depends on what type of a film fan or collector you are. Do you like collecting 4Ks and you just wanna own it? Okay, buy it. 
if it's that you're looking for an upgrade in image quality and things like that, so that's going to be amazing over the previous Blu-ray, this simply is not it. It's a poor 4K Ultra HD release, even taking into consideration the limitations of the original Interpositive. They could have done a better job with this. Next up, we have The Lady from Shanghai. This is Orson Welles' 1948 classic black and white film. And it's a very good noir black and white mystery thriller almost. And it is a fun film. I really enjoy it. I love the cover artwork that Kino Lorber did for this slipcover. I really like the noir look to it and how good it looks. It's got Rita Hayworth, Orson Welles in it. It's a fun film. If you like these classic noir films, this is one of those that desperately needed to have a Blu-ray release that was done well, and this is it. Kino Lorber did a good job with it. It's got a very stable image throughout it. There are fluctuations because of the age of the film, but taking that into consideration, it's a nice presentation. It's enjoyable to watch. I loved how on the side here, it's got Lady from Shanghai. It talks about the film, there's audio commentaries. The film runs 88 minutes, so it's a very fast-paced film. And this set is 100% region free. It's a recommended release. I really enjoyed this one. It was a fun time. If you like classic black and white films, you gotta buy this from Kino Lorber, especially while the slip cover is still available. Now, when you get inside here, you do get reversible artwork. There's actually two different cover artworks plus the slip cover. When you get inside here, here's your other artwork that's on here. It has your disc here, obviously, and this is 100% region free. And here's your third cover artwork. So you get three different ones. The other one I showed you, the front cover artwork on the slip cover, then this one. Man, Kino Lorber put a lot of love and care into this release to give us all three different cover artworks. Now again, because you get a different cover artwork on the slip cover, that to me makes this a really cool collectible. So I definitely, if you're gonna get this film, I would get it while you get the slip cover so you get all three different cover artworks on this. A personal favorite 1986 fantasy action movie is Ghost Warrior. I have always really enjoyed this film. I, it's one of those 80s films that's just a fun time and it's a fantasy action film. And I think it's really well done and I was really excited that Kino Lorber decided to release this on Blu-ray. Now you do get this with this nice slip cover. Again, limited edition slip cover. It says it on the side, talks about the film back here. Now it does run 81 minutes. So it's a very, very, very fast paced film. And when it came out in 1986, it was kind of one of those that wasn't well received. A lot of people just didn't understand it, but it's grown in cult status over the years and it's a huge cult film now. And if you haven't seen the film, if you watch it now, you'll understand why, especially if you love 80s films that are fantasy action adventure films. This one has got some really cool stuff in it and I really enjoy the film and it, to me, it's gotten better over time. And it's basically the story of a samurai warrior that's woken up out of ice, he's frozen in ice and wakes up 400 years later, obviously in the future. And he's kind of violent and trying to integrate into society and get into how things have changed. How 400 years ago, he didn't know any of that. So it's really one of those like Iceman comes stories where it's all about him coming back to life after being frozen for so long, adjusting to the society and still having his like samurai warrior ways. And to me, it's just got so many things great going for it that I've always enjoyed this film and this presentation on Kino Lorber's release is the best way to view this. Now, personally, this is one of those films that I think deserved a 4K Ultra HD release. I would have loved to have gotten this on 4K, but because this is on Blu-ray, I'll take the Blu-ray release because it's the best this has ever looked. Now showing you what you get in this real quick, you do get reversible cover artwork as well. So remember you get your slip cover cover artwork, then you get reversible cover artwork. So I do like that they did that extra love and care for this release. Then inside you actually have your Blu-ray disc. And I did test this and this is region A locked. This is one of those kind of hidden gem cult classic films from the 80s that I've always really enjoyed. I'm glad it got this nice Blu-ray release. It is rated R for violence, language, but I enjoy it. And I really like the film. I'm glad to own this. And this is the best I've ever seen this film look. This definitely comes highly recommended. Next up, we've got The Asphyx, the gothic horror sci-fi from 1972. And when I say gothic horror, it really is a mixed mash of gothic horror and sci-fi blended together. Now, it's one of those films that it's got different cuts in it. To restore the 99 minute cut of the film, 
they had to add in some of the SD upscaled elements in the film to actually get those cuts because those actual elements don't exist and all that remains is SD that they can upscale and kind of enter space in the film. So there are some scenes where you do have some different variances between the cuts of it, where it'll go from a really good looking scene to one that looks very slightly poor because it's SD upscaled, then to one that looks really poor to one that looks really good. But that's the only way you could ever watch this with the extended cut of the film. So I understand those limitations and I really enjoyed the extended cuts. I like all the different pieces that add to the story, which actually make this film much more enjoyable than the way it was without those cuts. So I'll take the SD cuts that they had to do to put into this to enjoy it the way it's intended to be. And showing you on the back here, it does talk about it too. It says the extended 99 minute cut of the film is included. This reconstruction of the extended version blends HD footage mastered from the 35 millimeter negative with SD footage that's mastered from a US release print of inferior quality. So it's exactly what I was explaining. It's rough in those scenes, but then it's got a lot of really good scenes, but that's the only thing that exists for it to be released so that you can see those cuts. And it's a fun gothic horror movie. Well, that was a lot to cover, to review, and to do in this video today. I really hope all of you enjoyed all the hard work and time I put into this. Make sure if you're going to buy any of these releases I've reviewed to go down to the description section or the pinned comment below this video, click on the Amazon links I've posted down below. I'll have each and every one of these from every country listed down in the description section and as a pinned comment below. They never cost you even a penny extra when you click on those links, but that does help to support this YouTube channel just a tiny bit. So make sure if you're going to buy any of these, click on those links down below. As always, if you enjoy all the time and the hard work that I really put into these, just like this one, this was a massive review video that took me several weeks to compile, test, get all of my data together and to create this video for all of you. Make sure if you enjoy all the time and the hard work I put into every single video I release here on my YouTube channel, make sure to join my Collectors VIP Club. It costs you less than a couple of dollars each month but it drastically makes a difference in me being able to continue to create this content. I'm not sponsored or paid by anybody. I'm only able to continue creating these videos through you, my VIP club member support. If you're not a part of my VIP club membership yet, I ask that you please consider joining my VIP club membership so that I can always keep continuing to do this. You can also give a super thanks through the super thanks button right down below. It's just like a tip. It allows you to give a tip of any amount that goes right back into the creation of these videos as well. Both of those, the VIP club and the super thanks are extremely important. I cannot stress it enough. If most of you know how little YouTube pays on every single view, it's almost nothing. It's literally pennies for thousands of views that the only way I can always do this is through your support. So make sure to join my collector's VIP club or give a super thanks to the super thanks button down below. As always, I want to say thank you to all my VIP club members. Every single one of you are extremely important and valuable to me. And I really appreciate all your love and support. If you enjoy this, make sure to give a like and a thumbs up as well. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. That way you never miss out on any of this content. Also, don't forget to start the conversation in the comment section below. Comment down there below, let me know what of these titles I covered in this massive review video that you're excited about, that you're wanting to buy now, or that you're going to add to your collection. Make sure to start that conversation in the comment section below. I always love hearing from all of you. As always, I hope all of you truly have a blessed day, and I've always got something new and exciting coming out very soon.